going to let that one through, which I'm still not sure whether that affects him too heavily. I think it does, because um, as I was talking about in the SKT game, his favorite two champions, the Lucian and Graves, both banned out against him. And then going back to the Caitlyn, he isn't he doesn't like Caitlyn that much anymore. Talking to him just yesterday, uh, because of the way that Caitlyn does fall off and the fact that you have to use her early game power to get something, make it happen. Um, I think that, you know, maybe TPA, uh, no, they're not going to nope. continue with that strategy and ban out Graves as well. But taking out the number one pick, Lucian, is pretty strong. But you talked about it with the Ziggs ban. That means Morning may well be in a little bit of hot water here. There is the Cassidy ban as well, targeted towards Peke. A lot of mid lane focus here. Won't the final ban be from Fnatic? We'll see what they leave open on this one. Remember, LeBlanc is out there, Morning played that one earlier on. We'll see whether they go with that ban as the final choice or whether it will be an huh. AD carry. We'll see what it's going to be. It's coming in a moment. It is Syndra, I believe, that's about to come through. And Kazix being locked in very quickly. That's going to be wins, I feel, in the top lane. Yeah, or in the jungle. Wins, uh, jungle yeah, yeah, wins yeah. in the jungle. Very much a fan of Kazix, as pretty much all junglers are. Of course, he yeah. chose it in the blind pick that got them here. Uh, that's definitely a first pick worthy champion for TPA. Pretty good start for them. But again, mid lane focus here. What is Morning going to play? Because they also ban out the Syndra, who's strong in lane and is a long range uh, mage from the mid lane. We'll have to see. He's probably going to play something pretty safe, uh, trying to farm. The Orianna is still up. Maybe the LeBlanc. A lot of discussion right now between Cyanide and Yellow Star. You can see them clearly being the vocal ones. So as Pauline Wood in there as well as Peke trying to decide, will it be the mid lane focus to start with? Without LeBlanc available, it might well put Morning in yet more trouble, taking away every champion he can. And Yellow Star on one of his favorites, Leona. So yeah, Link was talking about the TPA focusing on that LeBlanc pick. Fnatic take it away, and you get the other one. Oriana showing up. Defensive, she can farm okay in the lane, and we saw Link actually in that matchup did really well. Ooh, Zach, potentially. He was played by TPA yeah. in them crazy best of five series, but it is going to get switched away from Thresh, would be the wiser choice. They are going to go with that one alongside Ariana. Yeah, the Zach actually was taken by Morning and he swapped up to top lane, and they had a Renekton mid lane to try and uh, lane up against uh, Fizz, I believe it was. But yeah, we won't see him switching around, doing that Zach, anything weird, going with the safe Orianna that we talked about. Reckless currently cycling through. He's been through Graves, Jinx, Twitch, now on towards Vayne. And honestly, these are all champions he's had good performances on. If you think back to TPA versus Fnatic, back at IPL 5, where Fnatic went, and one, two, and zero. That's when he was rocking the vein and actually went and beat double lift on vein himself. However, looks like they may well switch back. We're still clearly indecision about which AD carry because he doesn't know what he's up against. I'm guessing BB will go with the Jinx if it's available. Yeah, I mean, they have looked at uh, the hard late game carries for BB. They really need BB to get a lot of kills if they're gonna look to win the game. Usually he has to get double digits. And there we go, he instantly locks in a hard carry for the late game but it is going to be Bane. I want to talk about TPA's comp here, though, because they are locking the Kha'Zix plus Orianna. They already have a good ball delivery system. Having that on Kha'Zix in the first place is going to help out because he will probably transition into that tanky build later. And it will even... Uh, he's a great champion for starting off that Shockwave because he can get in there so easily with invisibility. So Elise being picked up by... Uh by Cyanide, we're just waiting to see what Soaz is going to lock in finally. But as you mentioned, the Vayne locked in there. Lissandra, Archie played this the other day. Actually worked out pretty well for him. It's probably been his best champion so far at this event. Yeah, we'll see how well they can actually control those early minion waves because that's really been the story for all of the solo top laners. When oh. all of these switches come in. Soraka getting locked in. That's going to be Soaz, I believe, in the top lane. Now, cast your mind back, it was the playoffs. He ran it in the top against Alliance, I believe it was, and it was dominant in that top lane. How's that going to work against Lissandra, though? Yeah, he can. Si the silence is very, very potent against Lissandra. We'll have to see, because usually Le uh, Soraka shoves up the lane pretty easily, spamming, and we'll have to see how Cyanide actually supports that lane. This is all de uh, determined by where the lanes are playing out in the early game, though, because we've seen so many lane swaps due to different jungle starts. <laughs> oh, the crowd are going literally bananas right now. Uh, <laughs> as they <laughs> flip bananas <laughs> around. So, Soraka in the top. High will be happy. 
because he's been he's been calling for this champion throughout the whole tournament because he's not here that's his champion of choice but unfortunately he's not going to be in the mid lane for him but he's still going to be watching at home what do we make of these two comps? Because this is a pretty wild choice coming out from both teams. I think especially for Fnatic. Yeah, interesting, really interesting part is that there are no Ignites right now on TPA going against Soraka. And this is so as Soraka, he takes Teleport instead of Heal. So he can't. He wouldn't even be able to remove the Ignite debuff if it was put onto him since he's using the Teleport instead. But TPA do not run with uh, anything to burn through a target. So in prolonged team fights, the Soraka really going to give Fnatic a big edge. Well, as we storm the rift, drop by Twitter and tell us who you think got the better team comp in Champ Select. You can tweet us about your vote at LOL Esports and use the hashtag TPA or the hashtag FNC. So, here we go, ladies and gentlemen, the final game of the group stage. <laughs> Fnatic or Taipei Assassins will be going home after this game. Who will move on to the semifinals to face SK Telecom? We will find out over the next course of the Summoner's Rift. Rift. <laughs> Taipei Assassins as the blue team and Fnatic as the red team. Massive home favorites here in Paris. Both teams starting out with the early ward. Fnatic's place very quickly here. Getting the intel. Yes, they've seen where the ward from TPA has been placed as well, so they can work around this. So Jay does come around towards the bush, doesn't manage to get it down there. Sinai just skittering around in the bushes. And TPA actually will be going in towards this bush. Sinai needs to be very careful about his next approach. And I have to say, with the team shaping up like this, TPA do have late game insurance policy with the Vayne. They've got, there would be nobody really who could split push handle Vayne if they do get to that late game on even footing. Whereas Fnatic are really team fight focus here with the AOE AD carry Graves and Soraka as we mentioned but they also have pick potential themselves Elise LeBlanc and Leona great at punishing people for bad positioning and as Krepo was talking about Fnatic they kind of lost confidence in their poke comps so they've been running more hard engaged been running more team fight oriented yeah I mean Nidalee was available and that's, yeah. that's someone that Peke would have locked in on early, but as you say, they've kind of lost confidence in themselves, despite the fact he still hits it hard in solo queue. It is LeBlanc he's gone with this time around up against Morning's Oriana. We'll see how that works out for them. No great differences in starting items. We do see, of course, the Roby Jam for Jay, but we are seeing Fnatic hesitantly tiptoeing in towards the blue buff. All right, so we will see the common invades here. TPA actually starting off on their own side. And Fnatic are trying to go for a double buff start. Will they be able to get it? Cyanide can smite. Jay could pull off an Afro move, though. Oh, he already used <laughs> his empowered attack. He's going to try and go in. The teleport, teleport coming through. In. Cyanide in trouble. He gets the blue buff, but he's going to have to flash away. Actually, does manage to follow through. First blood will be going across the type of assassin. Oh, and and they get the blue. Actually, and a blue buff for Lissandra is vital. Cyanide got his blue buff, but then he immediately lost it. So Lissandra going to be very happy about that one. Since it's a switch anyway, it's not that bad blowing that teleport. Now they could have... Oh, actually, he recalls and he's going to try and defend here? Interesting. They also call over Kha'Zix. So Wins and Achi might be trying to go for a defense here, but they're already been zoned off the turret. But despite that call. death, it doesn't actually set Cyanide behind too far because he's still going to get his red buff, which is all that Wins has got. He got the experience from the blue. He did get the experience, yeah. He got the kill in the end as well. And we do see Fnatic doing that Porsche, of course, on the top turret. They're not going to go for it yet. Wins is going to come around defense. And as you mentioned, actually is up here to defend, but they are only level one and two up against three members of Fnatic at level two. And Cyanide is making his way across here as well. So Soaz was able to get a blue too. So even though Lissandra can spam out, try and spam out wave clear here, they've got a Soraka with blue buff. Uh, the mana battery and the heal battery up there in top. If they wanted to play a prolonged siege, then Fnatic would definitely get the upper hand. And they've actually even called in Cyanide here. Didn't see whether he managed to steal it away there, actually. You know, this play has to be made to count this for is dangerous. Why are they still staying here? They saw Cyanide already. What are they doing? Actually, and Wins, who's going to get locked up? He's going to flash across. Yellow Star up towards Wins. Wins is going to take all the damage, the punishment. The tower hit towards the Fnatic. They kite it so, so well. And that's a double kill. And surely the tower in just a moment. 
They've seen Cyanide, they do not escape the turret. Fnatic picking up two kills here to answer, and that will be an objective as well. Let's take a look down bottom. What have BB and Jay been able to do here? They've built up a pretty nice wave, but not much turret damage. Well, they didn't push too hard. They have got some damage down. Check this fight out, though. This is what you call. Why didn't they back away? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, Soaz and, and Cyanide coming in with double buffs. They've got the armor there from the Soraka heal as well. Makes this really easy for them to pull off. Beautiful play there from Fnatic, able to capitalize. Very well played. You see the tower going down. This is the bottom to it as well. TPA do not quite take it down just yet, though. Jay and BB are going to have to push hard to try and get this one before Soaz gets back there. I think they should take it down, so it's going to be a turret apiece. I don't know. So, uh, Soaz was confident. He didn't use his teleport to get down there. Just walk into lane as Soraka. He's coming to at least get experience from the cannon wave. Yeah, he's going to clear it down with that siege minion there, as you say. The cannon wave will take the turret down. There he goes. Peke getting on towards morning. He's going to have Leona a lock up there. In comes around. Yellow start chaining that CC. He tries to flash away, but it's a kill for Peke. Another kill for Fnatic. Roaming supports here. Yellow start coming up huge. And you've got to wonder about that flash. Surely he knew he was already dead. It's like wasted someone, yeah. I feel, towards the end of that one. The crowd definitely starting to get behind the home team. They've got a huge advantage. Top now, a huge advantage. Mid. And Soaz, on that Soraka, has a giant CS lead as well because he was able to stay up there. So he's actually okay down here in this long lane, even without his turret. They have a little bit of ward coverage. He's just hugging the bush here because he has nothing in the tri bush. So both teams actually trying to put a lot in the early pressure. You can see Double Doran's rings being bought all around. Everybody blinging themselves out so far, but it is Fnatic with that slight edge, with that 3-1 kill advantage, which Transitions into a 1,000 gold advantage. Jay on Thresh hasn't really been able to make too much of an impact yet. He was all on his own down that bottom lane for a long period of time because Fnatic seemingly have a tactic this time around. Well, yeah, they did, he didn't have anybody to play against. He was playing against minions <laughs> and a turret down there, so Jay didn't have a too big of an impact. And it's basically going to be the bottom lane. It's up to BB. As usual for TPA, he is really going to be the focus for them. He needs to be able to carry this game if they have a hope. They're looking for that late game split push vein maybe. To do that though, they're gonna have to get through a beastly mid game of Fnatic and avoid some of the picks. They've already been caught out once by Leona. LeBlanc is so good at capitalizing on any sort of gank. He even set that one up for Yellowstar to come in. Well, it's you looking pretty bad. For ordinarily, you see Cyanide helping out quite a lot in this mid lane, and with Morning with the heal and Flash both there, and I would expect him to pay a visit. You can see Peke already starting to work down the hit points. Actually, fairly even trade so far, but the pings are already going to Morning here. I think Cyanide is going to make an approach. Cyanide coming no, in from the just side, the back. yeah. The ward coverage here on the mid lane now is fairly decent. He's got one up there in the top side pixel, and they have establish that pink ward as well. So he's feeling a little bit safer, but like you said, no summoners available. Burn both heal and flash. Gonna Someone's have to watch his step and CS from afar. Someone's feeling confident in that bottom lane. He's actually pushing in. Winds actually came back because BB had taken a fair bit of harassment as you can see there with his hit points. And so has actually single-handedly pushing BB in towards the tower. Man, the biggest story here for TPA is that their top lane, not only did they lose the turret, but they also got frozen up there by Fnatic's duo. This is terrible. They're losing out not only in global gold, but also in minion waves. Usually, the team that gets the early turret is the one who gets a wave frozen against them in deep. And so it kind of makes up there. And you have to watch how many minions are they losing for that turret. But Fnatic get the best of all worlds here. And this is going to be a massive graves, even though they've their TPA is putting all their hopes on BB down in the bottom lane, giving them the one easy farm lane. Fnatic actually have pretty much easy farm lanes all over. Yeah, and you can see that Reckless with that top lane wave, just holding it there. Yellow Star's going to come back up and help out, get some of that experience on towards him. Oh, and that freeze is not going to break anytime soon. Reckless is doing a good job of nurturing that creep wave and not shoving it back. Oh, never mind. He does <laughs> the fourth the job, misses the CS, <laughs> and buckshots the wave. Commentator's curse right there. <laughs> Straight away, but he's going to make sure it doesn't get taken down by the turret. He doesn't want to push it too heavily. You can see down the bottom, BB is trying to do a fairly similar job, so as doesn't want to get involved. And this is actually a blue buff invade from Taipei Assassins. Right, so 
this is the common uh, response to a, fra a wave being frozen that deep. You got to make something happen elsewhere on the map. They opt to go bottom, but their champions are fairly low level. Bane has not bought yet. So even though BB is the hope for this team, he's got all the CS. He's sitting with a Doran's blade. Oh, actually goes in. It's a hook on Yellow Star. He does manage to get away. You did see the blue buff was on Achi there. And actually, I'm looking towards the mid lane. I can see that Morning had used his Shockwave on Peke, but it doesn't look he's done a great deal of damage. Yeah, it was fairly defensively trying to get Peke to back off. Now it's going to be a giant minion wave. Let's see if they can actually defend this. Soraka can clear, but it's how dangerous does Soas want to go? How close can he walk? Yeah, it's a 3v4. Of course, Soas, you can say, he can clear those waves quickly, which is what he's trying to do. And he will be enough with that 3v4. And of course, while that's all happening, Reckless is now shoving this top lane, the AD carry. There's the teleport. That's going to be actually joining back in there. Finally, he's going to get himself some minions. Yeah, finally some experience here for Achi. They spent a while jungling uh, him and the support. See if they can come back from this because there was a great early start there from Fnatic. And even though TPA decided to try and make them pay for that freeze, it was really late. And the buck shot there, uh, Reckless was already trying to push that wave back. It was not a dragon pickup for TPA. It was nothing huge for them. They didn't they didn't get much out of that big wave bottom. Well, TPA all backing away. They've left themselves fairly exposed for this dragon. And with Cyanide on Elise, he's going to send that skittering spider in there. TPA are going to try and react to this one. You can see Jay and Wins just off the side there. They have got BB nearby, but actually hasn't got teleport. He's not going to be involved in this fight. And I feel it's going to be a dragon simply for Fnatic. Yeah, because... The teleport was used by Achi to go to that bottom. All right, you go for the steal attempt, but Cyanide definitely known for his smites. Good effort there from TPA, try and get back in this one. But again, the teleport was used by Lissandra to go cover that uh, lane that they had given up on, and it was seen by Fnatic. Very easily covered off. So we'll see how this progresses at the moment with the Gold advantage still in the favor of Fnatic. It's now built up to 2,000 gold. It's starting to stretch slowly but surely. So has got himself that giant minion wave in the top there. And she's actually going aggressive, looking towards this mid lane. Yellow Star trying to make a repeat visit. Beke actually going to get away. Solar Flare lands on towards Achi. Achi now going to get focused down. Yellow Star's going to be the focus for wins. Wins tries to bounce it towards him, gets the finishing blow as well with Taste of Fear and steps away. It's a good turnaround by Typo Assassin. Yeah, great move there from Wins. They're able to finally come up with something. They get a kill in the mid lane, but how much pressure can they create with this? Mid lane, there's a Graves and LeBlanc here. Pretty good wave clear already from Le Reckless. He's got that Bloodthirster, just straight AD. Does so much for Graves. It's really hard for them to push on this. Oh, the blue buff is potentially the focus. They really wanted to get in there, but Fnatic defending in numbers. See, Soaz has rotated down in towards that mid lane while Achi clears out that top wave. He's still got a gigantic CS advantage built up over Achi as well, but he's going to get focused out here. No escape for Soaz. Actually, oh. the contempt from PB helps him on his way. Yeah, so it does not walk close enough to the wall. And TPA do not get anything off of that uh, kill. Besides the money from the actual kill, Dragon had already been taken by Fnatic, and they can't do any pushing, so... Still, Fnatic definitely in the driver's seat, having a very good time with the way this game has started. They can use this strong team fight here to continue to control the map. And we'll expect Fnatic to be the ones making the early moves here. Unless TPA can get another pick, then it's going to be very hard for them to get back in this game. We'll see. Of course, TPA still have a fairly scary team composition of their own with Actually going in, if he could lock them up, get them in the right place. Wins could be pouncing in stealth, of course, with that ball delivery system, along with that shockwave. There's a lot of damage yep. able to come out of Taipei Assassins. Fnatic can't rest in their laurels. They have a good start, a good lead, but it is not over. Pepe's got to be careful, oh. though. Yellow Soaz Star's is going out into lane, though. Oh. This is the pick. Soaz is going to get caught out in the top lane. He's already used that wish. Meanwhile, that's down the bottom lane. They're actually pouncing on towards him. Soaz is going to try and get away from this one. Actually does get him down in the end there. Now while in the bottom lane, you can see Yellow Star locking on towards Bibi. Cocoon coming out onto Jay. This is actually a haphazard fight by Fnatic. They have to step away, and Bibi's going to try and chase on this one. That was a really bad engage on the bottom lane. Yeah, mismanaged engage. Uh, turret dive from Fnatic down bottom. And so as they do, he doesn't make TPA dive, he steps right out into lane. Great lockdown from Lissandra plus Kha'Zix. That's everything you need, the CC as well as the execute damage. So Reckless, he needs to get himself rolling here. BB on Vayne, keeping up in farm, keeping up in 
everything really other than the obviously single kill that Reckless managed to pick himself up. Blood Thurster versus a Blade of the Rune King. We'll see how that develops. Out back it goes aggressive on morning. Chunks down half his hit points and continues the flow with both of them on blood, blue buff. They want to go aggressive. Look at that top lane though. They got the kill on Soas. They took him out. They were not able to take the turret. So not converted into an objective once again. Uh, the pick just giving them a little bit more experience to catch back up. And that gold. Fnatic still feeling pretty comfortable. Uh, they're probably going to be looking to force some fights here because they have a much stronger team fight. A mistake from Peke and a very stern, serious looking face on him right now as he messed up a little bit on that Wraith there. He's not going to be angry with himself. Maybe that is a sign of nerves. It's something we saw almost certainly by Fnatic up against Royal Gaming, but of course they are three times champions in Europe, so they certainly know how to perform when it counts, but this is a high-pressure game for them. All right, so both teleports will be ready for that dragon in a minute and a half. Yellowstar is already laying the groundwork. Ooh, he doesn't quite get the leash in there. Cyanide tried to join him, but this is three members of Fnatic now in their mid lane. Ping Ward's being cleared out by Yellowstar. They may try and make the move on towards his mid turret. Yeah, I mean, you got to watch out for cocoons and the, the slow already lands. Oh, the dead sentence comes in the shockwave, but Peke tries to step away. Winds gets back on, takes the fear, comes out, locks him down on there. And now he's coming the cause in towards Cyanide. He will back away from this one. Soas had to back away. He had to defend that top turret, and it oh. left Fnatic exposed. Yellowstar is coming in from the bottom, though. Well, whether he's going to get in towards that. Oh, he's going to start with the solar flare, locks on towards it. Reckless comes in, gets himself the kill. The cocoon landed on Winds. Wasn't quite enough to finish him off. Man, it was almost starting to just roll in TPA's favor. That was the third kill in a row that they had gotten. This one gets answered, though. Yellowstar, he abandons his ward clearing work. He's actually completed the objective, and then he comes over, rotates up, and gets the kill. More importantly, gets himself the CS, the kill, as you mentioned, and the tower down. Uh -oh. And now Achi's Silent. out of position. Where's he going to go? There's no shockwave available. He's going to get locked up. Tries to use anything he can to stun himself. Oh, that flashes away. Fantastic stuff. The ultimate coming out from Rekt is not enough to take him down. That's that annoying silence I was talking about in the matchup. He actually stops Achi from getting away and makes him blow his flash. So they do get a summoner spell out of it. So TPA, as you mentioned, had actually started turning the game in their favor, but Fnatic do respond quickly. It's still only a 2,000 gold difference, though, and the mid turret will go down. And Fnatic really want to get in position for that next dragon. They want to take advantage of that objective that they can force a fight at. So everybody needs to heal right now, and they need to get in position. Well, TPA are going to try and rotate down in towards it. They've taken the mid turret, they've got their vision advantage, and now they're going towards the dragon. This will pull the gold very close yeah. in terms of difference between the two teams. And Fnatic, they're helpless. They can't respond to this one. After that last fight, it was great for TPA. They answer the mid turret, plus they get the dragon. Dragon provides bonus experience to catch back up, and they get the global gold. This is huge for TPA getting back in this. Now we're seeing some momentum swing back their way. Serious pressure on Fnatic in front of their home crowd here in the European All-Stars. As Peke is going to get the blue buff. He needs that. He needs to get rolling on it. It's the second time he's had it in this game. But as of yet, on the Blanc, he's yet to start picking up the skills. This tower, despite being left alone for a long time, has barely been touched in the top lane. Yeah, you know, uh, they, they weren't able to get much damage off of it over the early kill up there. But again, coming back with that dragon is huge for them because TPA are the ones, as I said, with that uh, BB on Bane, he's got his Blade of the Rune King completed. He's feeling more comfortable extending further out into lanes, especially when he has Jay there to save him with a lantern or something. So this is not looking that terrible for TPA anymore. Uh, they're, star they're starting to ramp up that comeback. So we see Zonny's Hourglass now completed by Atchi on the Lissandra. So as is pushing on the bottom line. Ooh. This bottom lane pairing actually may get caught out. Reckless and Yellow start hiding in the bushes as BB pushes up the lane. He's going to be the focus target. They managed to land the Zonis on towards him. Let's lock him down with the solar flare, but Jay's going to try and turn this one. BB put the aggression back down. Teleport's coming in, but it's going to be too late because Achi is already there and they've got the kill for BB. Great initiative there from Achi. Teleporting in first, gets the lockup, and now Soa is way too close. So in trouble, Death Sentence just dashed out of there, Reckless. Peke had backed away, but he's coming back down to join the fray. You can see the tribush is covered off. Morning is laying in wait as well. It's a four on three. Fnatic is still pushing. Now they actually have a lot of threat on this bottom turret, and it's pretty low. So even three versus four, trying to shove it in. Oh, 
Hachi taking some damage, has got that Zonyas, as I mentioned, completed. And again, Fnatic unable to take it with that wave. Will they keep on pushing because the pressure is still on there? Top lane is covered off, Cyanide's up there, they want this turret. Uh-oh, Cocoon does lands into the Battle of the Junglers. Oh, well, he's going to be trying to turn around, but Cyanide's taking some serious punishment from wins there. There's the bottom turret, Fnatic finally got it down. They are 3-2 three turret up, three to two up in turrets, but this game is very close. Yeah, not that much wave clear once Morning leaves the bottom lane for TPA, so they have to give up the bottom turret. But BB, he's actually, he could be working into a static ship there. He could be looking to supplement that wave clear. Nachi oh, is invisible, and he didn't have a ward there, so. Uh -oh. Diff realize is there, but not oh. Holy smokes! Peke just melts Achi where he stands. That's the danger. Now his ability power starting to stack up. He can land his combo. And Achi knew that was very dangerous to go for, but it's only three members of Fnatic down here, even though TP have one member dead. They can oh, did he steal it? Oh, yes, yes he did. Reckless. Reckless with the steal. Nicely done on the red buff there, using that ultimate. While this is all happening, Soaz is continuing to push that top lane out. He's coming across towards the blue buff now, which Morning really wants, but the rest of Fnatic are there in numbers. They can steal both buffs here. Amazing turnaround here. Uh, Fnatic actually invading the jungle. Now, they really want to get more wards down here deep so they can get more of those picks that we saw from Peke and Yellowstar. Lissandra knew that it was a dangerous bush to go near. Trying to just shove that ward in there really cost him. Solar Flare lands, Bibi getting locked up here. Peke comes in to finish the job and it's another carry down for Yellowstar. He's going to get left stranded. There's going to be the wish coming out from Soaz. I'm not sure it's going to quite be enough. Peke's trying to land the distortion on three members. Not enough. He has to back away. Yellowstar, sacrificial land, buying time for Reckless in the mid lane. So even though they lose someone for that pick, they create enough pressure by drawing everyone else down bottom to get some damage on the mid lane here. Reckless, though, is going to have to back off because he has no backup. Oh, Jay throwing the lantern out. They're going to try and close up uh -oh. towards Reckless. They get him locked up. Flashes out of the shockwave just at the right moment. And he will get away scot-free. That is, that is going to be a pretty big cooldown there for Morning as well. Not able to... Uh, take another team fight anytime soon. Really though, their main objective right now is retain vision around their jungle. Fnatic are making invades all over the place on both sides. So TPA just have to be careful about letting people get caught out once again. And it looks like BB will not be going for Static Shiv. He does not worry about the wave clear. He's going for the Phantom Dancer hard carry. Well, we'll see how it works out. He's the man that Taipei Assassins have had to rely on to carry them through these sticky situations. Has not been able to do it so far in this All-Star 2014 Paris tournament. Can he do it this time? He's racked up some gigantic numbers throughout the Garena Premier League semi-finals and finals, as well as the quarterfinals, of course. He went crazy on Draven, but they are asking a hell of a lot to him. He is on Vayne, he is on a champion that will carry late. We're at the 22 minute mark and he's got good farm, but he was ahead and even with Reckless for a long period of time, but he's starting to fall behind. Yeah, there's a lot of pressure from Fnatic roaming around. It's not safe for BB anymore after that bottom turret went down. You also have to give props to Morning, though. He is shouldering that burden of wave clear, and he's doing a good job of it. He's actually caught back up in CS, so that's good news for TPA. Also, Achi with some timely teleports. The only problem is he has to watch out of the, his positioning because if Pekka gets a jump on him, we've seen what happens. He will be bursted 100% to zero before he can do anything. It's going to have to be a very quick Zanya's activation if he wants to stop that from happening. Speaking of timing, Fnatic ready for the Dragon Spawn, but as our type of Assassins, they actually swept the bush, didn't quite catch the ward just off of the side there, which is why type of Assassins have got themselves some vision in this Dragon area. Both top lane is still away in the top lane, keeping on pushing. Teleport will be available in just a second. Fnatic going deep on this Dragon. A lot of damage coming out from this one. Smoke screen goes down from Reckless. They take they it in the team fight. Wins goes in, Solar Flare lands on towards it. Jay takes the brunt of the damage from Reckless. Actually gets in there. So he's out, that's it's a great shockwave coming out from Taipei Assassin. They try and turn this one around and they may well just do it. It's a double kill for Reckless though, but he's gonna get pounced on. It's another double kill this time for BB. And it's a four for three, a four for two, sorry. No, Sinai got away, I can't believe it. He's on yeah. nothing. They do have control of the map here though. For TPA, yes, even though Fnatic were able to get that dragon, TPA, TPN, 
and they're able to have control of the map, so they can actually answer. BB is still alive as well, so he's getting more minions key for them. Let's take a look at this. Yes, Dragon is finished, but here, let's watch the shockwave that comes in because the AoE from CPA actually does a lot here. Archie locking up Peke this time. He's the one who got the jump, and then the shockwave. Everybody was on the Lissandra as well, and he's able to get a great shockwave front morning there, locking it up. Wins just running wild throughout that team fight. This is the Kha'Zix with the two damage items so far. He hasn't transitioned into tanky build yet going full offense. And that was the big combo that we talked about, the Taipei Hassan Assassins have. Once that damage builds up on them, it's only gonna get scarier, and Fnatic have gotta be careful they don't get caught out in the Dragon Pit, in the Baron Pit, or one of those locked up situations in one of those bushes, because TPA clearly proven they have the team fighting prowess on them. Fnatic, they've been working with picks so far, and they may well try and make another one here, actually being careful and actually getting the support of his team this time. Yeah, it was, it was definitely a beautiful job of Achi getting his vengeance on Peke this time around. Because he was able to lock him up first. Don't want to take that hook. And Jay knows it. Uh, it ups his hit percentage, though. Trying to do a mad life. He had the uh, wins, sorry, waiting just off the side there. Could have thrown that lantern out and pulled them all in towards it. But as you mentioned, they didn't want to take it. They didn't really have vision of it. So why is he stepped away? Fnatic are grouping. What is their objective focus, though? They definitely want to uh, get a team fight where Peke doesn't get jumped on. When he gets locked up, it's <laughs> really poor for them. They need to get one of, at least one of those long combos off. TPA are doing a great job, though. They're defensively warding up their own jungle with pink wards. Those are going to last a while, and those they can actually defend. Taking fights in the jungle, they thrive on these fights where they're spread out. They've got a Vayne and they have a Kha'Zix, both of them trying to run around, uh, trying to deal damage from different sides of Fnatic, not letting Fnatic lock them up. Oh, wins was the focus. Actually does come in here. They were a little off with their timing on that blue buff, and Taipei Assassins have a good way to push down this mid lane, but they're choosing not to go for it, despite Pekka using his ultimate back there. So as has once again pushed that wave in the top, keeping the pressure on there that somebody has to go deal with it once again. Yeah, TPA, they want to play defensively right now, and they're doing a very good job of it, uh, trying to hold on and close that gold lead because they're trying to wait out this Graves. Their AD carry skill is much better, um, and their jungler is going to be putting out a lot more damage late game too. Even though Cyanide is trying to help, he's going with the spell penetration Elise build, not the utility Elise build. We do see Fnatic trying to catch TPF Gar. Thought maybe a couple too many had backed away to the fountain. Instead, they all regroup in numbers, quick to react there. They knew Fnatic's rotation. You can see there is that ward covering off that mid lane. Give them full vision that there was Fnatic were there in numbers to try and shove down that wave and sneak out one of those mid turrets. There's the vision. You can see it on your screen in that mini map in the bottom corner. That's Taipei Assassin's view. Hopefully, we can see Fnatic's view, and it is clearly a lot brighter for Fnatic right now. They have much better vision, although that bottom half of the jungle is fairly untouched. I guess we'll be looking for some picks now because Fnatic don't look that comfortable. Hard for them to siege up around a turret, and they really want to make something happen with the uh, LeBlanc Leona Lees here. See if they can catch anybody out of position, but TPA are not going to give it to them. They want to hold out, and they're doing a pretty good job. So clearly this, at what, 30 minutes coming up to now, mm -hmm. is going to go a little bit longer maybe than the games we've seen. This could potentially be the longest game we've seen in this All-Star tournament. They actually have been fairly close to being around 35 to 40 minute mark for the majority of it. This is definitely the closest game we've seen at this point in time. It's only a, what, 2,000, 2,500 gold advantage for Fnatic so far. Who has the stronger of the two as we get later and later? Yeah, and it is fitting that this will be, or could be, one of the longest games that we've had. In these high-pressure situations, it gets down to whoever loses this one is going to kick out. They're not going to move on. We've seen in promotion tournaments in the LCS, teams start playing more passively. They don't want to take as many risks in that situation. But that playstyle kind of favors TPA. As I said, they're banking on BB, and he is scaling up nicely. He's actually even building defense because he doesn't want to get one shot by Pekka. He knows that he has to be able to survive one of those first, even if he gets caught out. So he's got a lot of magic resist, and the shield from Hexdrinker is just so he survives that one round burst from Pekka. And the danger, of course, will come once that 
death fire grasp is completed by Becca. You can see the Gravidon's death cap is uh, already on there along with that neatly large rod. So it's only a matter of time before that gets complete. Of course, morning on Ariana has been playing fairly safe and secure. Kept good CS with Peke and kept the item. Oh, Jay getting hooked in there. Quick distortion from Peke. Chain. Not going to land on one another. So as is making tracks to head down here. Peke, look at that distortion. Catching on Morning and TPA Bebe. So that is both carries. Now caught out. That may well be the dragon. Yeah, got the Bane ulti down. Wins can go again for another steal and a lantern out, but he doesn't have enough time there. With a Bane ulti down, it's actually extremely big. Even though it's a short cooldown, Bane without her invisibility is acidic duck. Even though she's still got the mobility of tumble. Ooh. Biggest part is invisibility. We engage! Have they caught down? No, Peke managed to distort out there. Actually, actually taken very low. Peke has to flash out. That's going to be the wish coming through from Soas to keep them topped off. Soas, uh, yellow star is caught out. Peke comes back around the side, decides against it. But now Bebe, he may catch him in there. Shockwave only pulls in Soas. It's not enough. Rex is from the side. He's getting free farm right now. Bebe's going to get focused on Cyanide. Switches out. Cocoon will come through to moment. That's going to lock on towards Bebe. Bebe will be it taken down. It was only a three for one, but it was a, such an important one. Can they feed off objectives? Will they go balance? Yep, Fnatic are very oh. happy. Fnatic gets all Fnatic, Peke! Peke he finds Achi just towards the end there. Now they absolutely will go barren. No jungler on the field for TPA. Easy call for Fnatic here. There's no shockwave even for Morning, even if he could get there. Not a lot of threat. Huge win for Fnatic. Jay takes in this hook with the team not quite all in position. And even though they get the lock up here, the sustain, so as with the heals, able to back up the rest of the team. And the secondary engage here too. Bebe flashes over to get this one. And the tumble out, Morning only hitting one person with Shockwave. Just such a disoriented fight here. TPA kind of looks like they rushed this one a little bit. They were stalling out really well. But they jumped the gun, and Fnatic made them pay for it. Fnatic extremely happy. They're relieved after that last team fight, because it was getting to look like TPA were mounting that comeback. They now have the Baron buff, though, and they could push with that. Big turnaround for Fnatic, that fight. Now, started off, actually, by TPA going in. Yeah. Maybe a missed call there. Who knows? They will have to analyze that one after this fight, and it could well have cost them the tournament. Fnatic now in the driving seat. Baron buff on and a gigantic gold advantage. It swung from just a two and a half thousand to what a nearly seven, eight thousand gold differential. And of course the Baron buff stacked on top of that, the gold difference which you can't really equate with that health regen it gives you. Yeah, Fnatic extremely happy with the recent turn of events. Everybody's going back to purchase with all the rewards they just got so that not only will they have the Baron buff over TPA, but they can actually use all this money, this huge gold lead that they do have, to bring about a Tower Siege where they can rely on some Paraka sustain, even though they don't have the best range for taking down a turret. Um, LeBlanc actually is adept at um, poking you under the turret. She just has to put herself in a little bit dangerous situation. So Peke, he can do some harass, but he has to worry about Achi. Keep your eyes on Achi. If if he's able to lock up Heke again, we've seen how that team fight will go afterwards. Yeah, and Achi actually did complete his Rabadon's death cap after the fight. You can see him glistening blue there as he picks up a brilliant pot. It was actually a Void Staff picked up, and Fnatic looking to see this one out. They've got the minion wave, and they should poke this turret down. No problem there. Fnatic in full control now. 4-2 up, and again, BB just getting poked out, and it does so much damage. Just a single wisp of a spell coming out from Peke in Bibby's direction and it just knocks a chunk of his hit points off straight away. Now this is an interesting situation for Fnatic because they could go safe and take these outer turrets which CPA will most likely not try and defend and get just some global gold and add that to the lead or they can crack into the inhibitor turrets which is what they really need because they're worried about this game going super long and they want to be able to crack into the base. It looks like the first decision, they stay there for only one wave, and now deciding to rotate over for the easier goal. The problem is they didn't really have a minion wave either side. Oh, oh it's a juke! Oh, the juke from Fnatic! TPA, they finally realized they're quickly switching around. They realized they've not shown themselves in lane yet. Let's get back around to that mid lane. They're keeping them running a merry dance. They're hoping that someone is going to step out across there. Peke trying to see if he can sneak anyone out there. Instead, takes himself back. 
I mean, it's a tough decision. Rightfully so, they're, they're flipping back and forth. And Fnatic would love to get a pick rather than having to just siege up like that. If they can keep moving between top and mid and catch TPA moving to defend this outer turret, then that would even be the better situation. They don't have to siege up. They would definitely take that option. But so as recalling, he's got the teleport. He wants to catch all this money at the bottom wave while the rest of the team keeps pressure. So that is old experienced heads, I feel, coming into this one, thinking we've got the Baron. We took it off the back of a good fight, but we're not that far ahead, although that's what they're going to feel. They're looking at all they can see is 1210. They can look at the items. They have no idea that they're, what, nearly 10,000 gold in the lead. It won't feel that way to them at the moment after so, so many close fights. And with, wisely, they, as you mentioned, step away and make sure all of the waves are pushed up so they can keep some pressure on those turrets. Now, look at the current state of the game. Very, very little ward coverage for TPA because they were bottled up inside their base when Fnatic have so much control. They weren't able to get any more wards down. All their wards expired, so the entire map is dark. Look at this. This is very scary situation for them. They have to play against Peke, who is extremely fed right now. He has the trinity of AP items, plus another needlessly large rod. So if he finds anybody, then it's going to be doom for them. And Fnatic would really love to play that game. They're going to try and strangle this entire map, take advantage of that vision. Take every resource away from them. 15 seconds until Dragon's up. That's absolutely fanatics. You can see Cyanide already heading off there. He's going to take that one down. All of the jungle being stolen away from Taipei Assassins, just amounting to masses of gold heading fanatics way. Peke, he's off the side. He wants to find himself a kill. BB not having a bean of that at the moment. He steps out of that jungle, backed away, despite the fact he's got that Banshee's Veil on him now. Even though he can get popped pretty quick. There is the dragon for Fnatic. Yeah, they want to play this as safe as possible, even with a 10k gold lead, looking to take away every option from TPA. They might even wait the full timer for that Baron to come up. They don't have to siege up on one of these turrets. However, they've got a fairly tanky Leona in Yellow Star, and if they still see anybody out of position, they have the opportunity to immediately jump on them. Reckless is fed nicely as well on this grade. You can see 612, 343 minions, the highest CS in the game so far. And actually, I would suspect probably getting close to the highest CS we've seen in the tournament so far as well. 12 standing kills, and as you see on your screen, it is a 12,000 gold lead. Fnatic get themselves in this position after a very good start, honestly, but a good turnaround from TPA to drag themselves back into Ooh. it. But they have been caught out by this one, Fnatic using that vision advantage they have and sneaking in there and taking it without the minion wave. And now they only have one more minute to wait for that Baron, so they will definitely go with this option. I do not see them sieging up an inhibitor turret. Since they have so much vision control, they can make TPA walk right into their hands. They've got the Soraka with the Rylize. It's hard for TPA to go face checking and getting vision around Baron. Because if they get close at all, as we said, Leona, Soraka's going to back anything up with slows. And they also have Peke, who's extremely fed. TPA are in a really tough spot right now. Not only do Fnatic come to the doors with a huge gold lead, but pretty soon, it's going to be the Baron. So TPA desperately sweeping out their jungle, trying to get themselves a little glimpse in towards that Baron pit. Jay dares sneak in there. He's realized it. He just peeks around the corner and puts it in the river. That's as far as he dares go. And already that's going to get spotted out. Pink Ward goes down from Yellow Star. That will be the only vision that Taipei Assassins had of that pit. The timer will not be visible for them. They're ping on it. They know that's where they've got to go, but they're going in blind. Yep, they're going to prey on TPA's anxious. Whoa, they're just actually going to face check here. TP oh, from Soaz. Sure, that's going to be a cocoon locking up wins, actually. They do the damage. Soaz teleports in, as you mentioned, but TPA actually got away lightly with that one, I feel, despite the fact they went in blind. Yeah, bold move from them, and they are rewarded. They're able to get the TP out, so at least they've relieved the pressure of the split push. However, the Baron threat is still there. They don't have no vision of that death push. Pink Ward actually going up just a second. He got locked up! Locked up! Pink down! Nicely done by Taipei Assassin. Jay tries to capitalize. It's not quite enough, but that was an important pick. And it's by Apti again locking him down. I have to say that was just a pure mistake by Peke. When I said he can go for those harass, he has to keep his eyes on Achi. Remember, Achi, when he gets the jump on Peke, he can lock him up first. 
there's no hope for Peke. Yeah, I mean, look look at his build there. He does not have any tenacity. He has nothing to get out of it. This could be an inhibitor for Taipei Assassins. They take the inner turret down, and they're going to keep on sieging through. They have the minion wave with them, and they can just force Fnatic away from this inhibitor turret. It's going to crank it open. Reckless using his ultimate, trying to force them back, blow them back away from this one. The minion wave is down, but TPA are not done yet. They are so happy with the way that went. That was pretty much the best possible outcome for TPA. Not only did they stop the Baron, get the teleport out, but they also got the kill on the main mid laner. And the middle turret already down below half HP. They're looking to get it before Peke revives, but the timer comes up. Well, they put a good siege on. They got a good dent into that turret. But as you mentioned, Peke is back alive. Look at that. You can see in the top turret being worked down by the minions. So is going to have to go up and deal with that one. That's going to delay. The Baron is up. I'm not too sure whether TPA want to start this one off. They're going to try and set a trap. Ooh, a Baron bait of their own. I don't even Fnatic think that TPA would do it. Now the ball comes out and they're aware. Well, the Cocoon does land. The wards come in. Fnatic are going to try and set themselves a trap. It's a dangerous game, though, as has been already proving. Actually, again, with his ultimate back up, he can lock down Ooh, Peke as BB well. BB real BB aggressive. What? Way too deep, I feel, in this one. Son of Blood locking him down, but there's no damage to follow through because Reckless and Peke off of the side. Peke taking some beatings from wins there. Reckless also having to get away. That was the wish being used out by Soas. And TPA are forcing Fnatic back here. They're going to back away from this one, but this is clearly a tense fight between these two teams. Fnatic do not feel they have any advantage whatsoever in these team fights. Yeah, they're playing pretty scared right now. I have to say, though, BB's early defensive items definitely paying off for him there. The Banshees and the Hexdrinker. Now, though, Fnatic with the recall of the jungler, they can just burst this down. Oh, they've got to be careful they don't get caught in the pit by that shockwave. It is available. Morning's going to come in. Keeps the Rast down on towards him, but the Baron is coming. There's the shockwave. Morning getting locked up. The rest of the team look focused on towards him. Reckless comes in, gets himself the kill. Win with the Void Spikes, trying to keep them away. Jay has got his play back available, but he's going to get locked down. You cannot escape. Four members of Fnatic with a Baron buff. Peke was keeping them busy at the side, and the crowd is absolutely loving the fact that Fnatic are back in the lead. Fnatic win the waiting game around Baron, and they prey on the timings. TPA backing off without vision. Fnatic at the Baron buff, and they're looking to end the game on this push. The stadium is erupting as is Achi. The Soas moves in. Every move, every blow is being cheered on by this French home crowd. The Soas manages to get himself the kill. This is going to feel so good for the Fnatic fans as they push on through for the win. TPA almost had the comeback, but now Fnatic oh, on the Nexus turn. Baby locks up, Baby goes down, wins his focus, he gets dropped, he gets to the fountain. It doesn't matter, Fnatic are on the Nexus turn. They're going to surely take one down, the second will fall, and Fnatic get through to the semi-finals to face SK Telecom in the All-Stars Paris. They pull it out, congratulations to Fnatic. Scenes here in the Zenith. Fnatic, it's been a long time coming, honestly, the win. Finally, the home crowd fans do get one, and it does put them all importantly through to the semi finals. It is against SK Telecom, the world champions, reigning world champions. It's going to be a tough beat for them, but by God, they had to work for that one. They did indeed. Playing a little bit scared there. TPA showing signs of life, getting a lot of good picks for themselves as well. But in the end, Fnatic control the Baron Pit, Fnatic control the game. It's gonna mean so much to them. So has absolutely big cheers on his face, but you know there's tears in their eyes, bless him. He absolutely